Hi everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna be going over exactly how to set up the workflows for your new Canvas page that you've already set up. Right now, this page only has the visual elements. The goal is to really make sure that you understand some of the tenets and principles that underpin the Canvas framework and the workflows that come straight off the bat with it so that you can modify it and extend it to meet your application specific use cases. To start off this video, I'd just like to jog your memory in terms of what we've already completed in our previous videos. Right now, we're creating an application which is a marketplace with buyers on one side and sellers on the other side. And buyers can view product listings that sellers have listed um, and ultimately purchase these. Right now, what we've created and what we're focusing on is just the seller portal. And that seller portal allows sellers the ability to manage their store information, such as an about us information. Secondly, it allows them the ability to upload new products and listings to their store. And then thirdly, it allows them to view and manage all of their listings as well. What we've done so far is we've pulled in the visual elements from the Canvas library, but now we need to start editing this information and building up the workflows behind it to meet our application's use case. Let's jump into the editor and the preview mode of our application so that we can see the work that we've already done before we start making these modifications and going through our next steps. So I'm here sitting in the preview mode of my application and it has the visual elements that we imported from the Canvas library in our last video. I haven't made any changes to the workflows or the functionality of these visual elements. So what I can see first here is that it's evidently a dashboard page with various tabs that I can use to navigate between um, the information on this page. Right now it doesn't do anything, but I do see that when I click this here, the URL parameter changes. So right now it's tab equals home. When I click friends, it's tab equals friends. And we can use this to display various uh, data in our page. The first thing that I can see on our page is some kind of form input. So I can input information, click save changes and update various uh, fields in our database. And what I wanna do is I wanna build the functionality to use this form to allow users to update their seller store information, such as the about us information. When I scroll down, I can see that there is a data table right now with dummy data in it. I wanna modify this data table to view and list all of my existing product listings on the platform so that I can choose to edit them or delete them. And I can see if I click this, there is already the functionality set up for edit and delete buttons, um, but it doesn't really uh, provide me with the correct information. So it's just generic information. So I need to update this pop-up as well. In addition, there is a new button, which I wanna use to create a new product. Right now, when I click that button, it doesn't do anything because none of that functionality has been synced up yet. So the first thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna update these navigation tabs. So Instead of it saying home, I want it to say products here, and I want the data table to be displayed when I click home. And then instead of it saying friends here, I want it to say store information. And then when I click this, I want it to display this particular form. So let's go to our editor and start setting this up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the navigation tab here and the information it displays. So if I double click this, I can see that this relates to group main navigation text one, which is this one here. And I wanna update this from saying home to saying products. And then I'll go to the second one and I'll just update this from saying friends to store information. And I don't actually need the rest of the tab. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go to layout here and I'm gonna hide all of them. So I don't want these actually displayed on the page at all. So previewing this information, I can see that it now says products and store information. And when I click store information, the tab is updated with store information. And when I click products, 
um, the tab is updated with products. And this URL parameter change of products and store information is really important because we can actually capture this and use this to hide and show groups conditionally on the page. So the first step that we need to do now is we need a way of knowing or capturing exactly what the current tab is so we know which groups to display. And the way that we do that is we use something called the pop-up hidden variables. And this is explained in a bit more detail in video three in that sign up flow, but basically it's a place where we store temporary data within. And straight off the bat in Canvas, there's something called the get tab URL. So there's a variable tab URL. And what this does is it's a type of text and from its data source here, what we can see is that it looks at the parameter name tab and it pulls the text after this. So basically what that will do is it'll pull products here. So if I inspect this one and I just search var tab URL parameter, I can see that its data source is currently products. Um, and if I'd click store information, its data source will be store information. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to conditionally display the two groups. So when we click products, so when group main one navs text products is the same as the tab here, I want the data table to be displayed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reveal this in the elements tree, pop up to the top here, which contains the entire group with all the data table information. I'm gonna make this element hidden on page load, and then I'm gonna add a condition, which is when group main nav one's text, which is products, is the same as the var tab URL parameters text. So when products is products, essentially, I want this element to be visible. And I wanna make this exact same change for the form with one slight difference. So I'm gonna make it so that when group main nav 2's text is the same as the tab URL parameters, it's visible. And the reason why is group main nav 2's text is store information. And then generally, I want this element to be hidden. So let's have a quick look at what this looks like. Yep, so when I click products, I see that my data table, and when I click store information, I see my store information. The next step here is to start actually building out some of the functionality for the application requirements. The first step here is to update the store information. So I wanna be able to capture the about us information um, from the seller, and I can really easily and quickly set this up. So I'll go to this particular form here, and I'll update this to seller store information. And I can just update this to about us information. The only input that I actually need is the about us. And I can hide all of the other inputs. And the way that I do that is I'll click reveal in elements tree here. And I've got group standard input. And I don't want it visible on the page load. And then for every single other one, I'll also hide them. And then finally, I will create the workflow so that when you click save changes, we save this information to our database. So this workflow has now been set up. And if I just jump over to this tab here, I can see the seller store information. I can write, this is my new store. And then just be notified that it has been changed. Next, I wanna update this data table. So I wanted to say product listings, the number of results, and then I also want it to have product specific information instead of dummy data right now. And then we'll start getting into how to add new products and edit new products as well. Now, given that you would already know how to update a data table with product specific information, I'm not gonna go into the details of exactly how to set this up. 
So I've now updated the data table to list off my product information. And if I jump over to the preview tab here, I can see how this information is displayed. The next requirements that I wish to build to meet my application use case is one, the ability to add new products. So you click this new button and a pop-up appears, which we can fill out and add new product information. And then two, associated to that, we wanna be able to click this edit little drop down that pops up um, and it'll, it'll bring up a pop-up where we can again edit our product information. And we actually use the same pop-up for both of these workflows. And I wanna show you how this is done. So I'll jump back to my tab here, my editor tab, and I'll click on menu focus template. So this is related to this little toggle here and this little drop down here. Um, and it's a reusable element. So I have to click edit element here. This opens up the page reusable element menu focus template. And I don't want to edit this particular one. What I wanna do is I wanna duplicate this reusable element. So to do so, I'll go here, I'll go to add new reusable element and I'll call this one menu focus products and I'll clone it from the template. Now I've created this reusable element. What I wanna do is I wanna update the reusable element that's actually on the seller portal page. So I'll go back to here, click on seller portal. I'll bring up that reusable element. I want to delete this particular one. I want to add this particular one. I want the data source to be parent groups products. I'll go back to edit element. And I wanna change the type of content from dummy to product as we are trying to um, change the information associated with the product data type. As a side note, a reusable element is an element within which we can create other elements such as groups or workflows. And it's really useful if we have some information that we wanna use in multiple places. Uh, an example of this is the header reusable element where we make updates to the header in one place and then we pop the header element in multiple pages or every page that we have in the application. Bringing this back to the menu focus reusable which we're modifying right now, this is a really useful reusable as it allows us to have the same set of functionality and components such as pop-ups and actions, which we can use throughout our application. In addition, it provides us with a really nice drop-down menu which pops out of a repeating group and you'll be able to see this applied throughout this video. The next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start making changes to this pop-up advanced form. So this advanced form pop-up is actually the pop-up which we brought into our application in our last video from the Canvas library as it allows us to capture the information required for our application use case, such as the ability to add a product title, add a product description, and to upload multiple images of our products. You can really easily modify this particular pop-up to meet whatever information you wish um, required. So you can duplicate a lot of these inputs if you need further inputs and you can hide something like the drop-down groups if required as well. As you should also already be um, aware of how to make these changes, I'm going to make these changes and then go back and explain what I've done. So I've made these changes to the pop-up advanced form so that we can capture the information that we require for our specific products. Um, what I wanna do now is I wanna work through just the workflows and how they're set up and just show you how we can change them and why we need to change them. So I'll jump back out to here and I'll just show you that preview page. So when a user is on this preview page, what they're gonna do is they're gonna to want to edit the product. So they'll come here and they'll click the edit button. So going back to this reusable, let's just view that process. So there's a group focus called dummy, which is the focus group that comes up and stores that edit and delete button. I wanna change that type of content from dummy to product. So it will be associated to the product information in this repeating group row if we click edit or if we click on this one, it will have the product information in this repeating group row. 
I'll then click on this edit button, which is group option two, and I'll click start edit workflow. So we'll see what happens when a user clicks this button. It'll trigger hide focus group, which is this one, which just hides that focus group, and then it'll trigger create edit thing. So that's this custom workflow. And this custom workflow is associated with showing the pop-up with the product information. And it's actually set to the pop-up add edit thing, not the pop-up advanced form, which we've added from the Canvas library. So we need to update this to the correct pop-up. So this workflow will now make sure that the correct pop-up is shown and displayed with the correct product data as well. So I'll go back to the pop-up now. What I wanna show now is what happens when we click the save changes workflow. So when a user clicks the button save changes, there's two options that can happen. So if the button save changes is clicked and the pop-ups advanced form, the product is empty, so no product information has been provided, then it will automatically create a new product in our database and capture that information as a new light item in the repeating group. If the advanced forms product is not empty, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make changes to the product information. So we're gonna go through the edit workflow and in this way, what we're able to do is we're able to use the exact same pop-up to have both the create new product workflow and also the edit product workflow. What I wanna show now is the changes that we need to make to the seller portal. So I'll jump back to the seller portal page and I'll go to the design page here. What I wanna show now as well is I want to link up and set up this button to trigger that pop-up so that we can save a new product. And the way that I'm going to do this, so first I'm gonna scroll down to the reusable elements here and click on menu focus products, the reusable element that we just set up. And I wanna drop it in in this exact same group that button new lives within. I'll then go to the layout section, collapse when hidden, and make sure the element is visible, not visible on page load. So I don't want the end user to see this particular reusable element. I'll go back to the button new, I'll click add workflow. I'll go down to here, custom events, and I wanna trigger a custom event from a reusable element. And the reusable element is gonna be the menu focus products we just dropped, and it's gonna be create edit thing. So, Basically, to walk through this workflow, what it does is when you click the button new, it triggers create edit thing and shows that add product or edit product pop-up that we have. As the reusable element doesn't contain any product information, that pop-up is set to adding a new product. So when we click the save changes button, we're gonna be creating a new product. Let's preview this and just see what it looks like in practice. So I'll go to here, I'll click edit, and I can see all that information is already there. And let me just edit some of the information. So I'll update this price to 1500, so make it a bit more expensive and click save changes. And I can see the price has been updated. I'll click on new and I'll add a new product and I'll add another iPhone because my store is just selling iPhones and I'll add a dummy description. I'll add a price and I'll put it at 1250 in between the other two. I'll make the color red and I'll upload a dummy image here as well. And I will click save changes and I can see that this new product has been created. If I click edit, I can see all the information is there. What I wanna show you now quickly as well is just how to set up the filter information. So when we add a value, for example, in the price minimum to maximum, and then we update this value, how we can actually have this reflected in the repeating group information itself. So the way that we do that is we jump over back to our editor tab, and I'll go here and I'll click on the filters template, and I'll click edit. What I need to do here now is I need to duplicate this reusable element as I don't wanna update the template. I wanna create a unique filter for the product. So to do so again, I go down to here, I add a new reusable element and I'll call it filters product. 
and I'll clone it from the template. I'll go back to my seller portal. I'll bring up that filter. I will remove this filter and I'll replace it with the one that I've just created here. I'll rename this one to product repeating group for my easy reference. And I'll just go to here and click edit element. Now what I wanna do is I want to click on the group focus filters. So what I need to do is I need a way to save the price range information that me as a user provides, so the minimum and the maximum. And then when we click update, I need to send this information to the page, uh, the seller portal page, so that it's saved and stored and we can filter the repeating group list based off this. And the way that we do that is we use something called custom state. So when I click on the filter templates itself and click on this little information button, I wanna create custom states. And this allows me to store temporary variables or temporary information within the reusable element itself. And this can be referenced from any page that the reusable element resides in. So the first custom state I wanna make is price min and I will set that to a number and then I will also set one to price max and set that to a number. Next I want to update the custom state when the button update is clicked. So I'll click start edit workflow and I can see here that the states are updated so I'll update price minimum and update price maximum and I will make it to be this one and input max filters value. You can see that they're coming up in red and the reason why they're coming up in red is because the price range is being provided as a text content format. And what we actually need it to be is we need it to be an integer. And the reason why is that prices or currency should be provided in a number format. So that resolves my issue there. What I wanna do now as that is the only filter that I require is I wanna hide my other filter item. So I'll just go to here, go to my layout tab and click collapse when hidden and then hide this one as well. Now the next step that I need to do is I need to go to my seller portal page and I need to reference this custom state information and I need to use this to filter the information that's appearing in my repeating group. So to do this, I wanna to go to the seller portal here. I want to open my repeating group here. Now what I need to do is I need to update the repeating group information. So I wanna add some constraints to the search and I want these constraints to be related to the price. And when the price, I want the price to be greater than or equal to the filter price min and also the price less than or equal to the filters price max. And I also wanna make sure that ignore empty constraints is ticked. So this means that if there is not a value provided here, this constraint will be ignored. So let's see how this works on the front end. So let's try adding a value. So 1,200, this filters the information out. And let's also try 1,300. This filters the information all out as well. Alrighty. This brings us to the end of today's video and I wanna highlight a couple of things before we end. The first thing I wanna highlight is there are some functionality which we didn't build out for the page that we have, such as the ability to delete products once we've created them or the ability to sort uh, the information in the repeating group based off the dropdown. If you have any questions about these, please feel free to shout out to us in the Canvas forum or just drop a question in the comments below. Now, I really, really hope that this video has helped you to get a better understanding of the workflow side of the Canvas framework, including 
what workflows come with it, but also some of the fundamental principles as to how we've built this framework. And I hope that this helps you to understand how you can extend this framework to meet whatever application use case that you are building for. Now, our next video is gonna dive into SendGrid and we're gonna be going over exactly how to set up emails and new email templates for your application. Hope to see everyone there.